Oh my god. It is the last day of February. February 28th. February 10th, February 28th, February 28th, usually, and every three years. And every other year, there's like 29 days. Just like last year. And in fact, last year was like, pretty much the year it was all considered to be a leap year, like as always, you know. Every four years is a leap year there, and you get like February having 29 days. As usual, that's what I've done. But anyway, uh, I don't know how good or bad the video is going to be like, but today it's been pretty sunny day. It is 11 degrees Celsius outside, as I've just checked the weather there. Pretty much the beginning of what spring is going to be like though. We had some very cold winter, so snowy weather that we had recently today. Right? And we've got some spring here, which is nice to say. But, um, yes, I did say the word say, but, um, obviously I don't know what I have to say in this video because pretty much I've been away from YouTube for pretty much for quite a bit of a a, a while though because I've been doing a whole bunch of TikTok videos on my account day. I think this is a rest of the day. I wouldn't say more but just say the rest of the day because obviously TikTok is now becoming well, it was a fun app over all day, but it's now becoming a dangerous one. Okay? So with that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and start this review because well let's just think of the that side of my life though. And I was really good And uh we've got nine pick up products today, which is not gonna be too bad though. Um not too much. Not too little as well. So anyways, I'm gonna just start this video. Uh I don't know which pick up product I'm actually gonna start with. Oh, maybe this one here. I don't know what this one's going to be all about. And I've actually got a quite a catchy amount of pick up products here at the moment, though. And uh, maybe start with this one here, though. We'll take this product here for a bit of a break there first, because the first product we're going to be taking a look at is it is a basic and simple wild rock dove small flock five pack. And it costs like £8.99 or £9. Luckily I've just got my arm over the train. Just literally run on top of the train now. Like so. Just to make sure that the train is not colliding with my arm now. There's the back of the packaging now. In fact my room is so manky and dirty, in fact it needs a good hoover after making this video though. There's the back of the packaging which looks like that. And uh, with the train on the background now, it's running nicely though, but I don't think it's running that fast as what happened to like the last couple of weeks or so with that new fresh battery on. But anyways, I'm just going to unpack this. Obviously, um, I think what I can actually work out though, the eye is pretty much different though. And um, yeah, I just can't believe it. Everything is all you know, basically different. Uh, it's quite funny, oh sorry, quite funny that I didn't do any um, many fishing products this year though, maybe last year I didn't do that many though, but hopefully this year I might have the largest amount of flip flap origami pigeons I might be producing, alright, that would be really awesome, and it's just pretty much the same except for the beak, and also the eyes as well, they've got red eye rings and orange, I would just say irises or eyelids, uh, I think I'll probably call them as mutating membranes after so though, but um, it's pretty much the same sort of design and whatnot, but um, not too bad. Eh? Some of them have got like a uh, pencil, like detailings with the green on it, and also some of them have got like felt tip detailings on them, which is pretty much interesting to say. Eh? But uh, it's not too bad after so, eh? not too bad. Looking pigeons indeed though, I actually don't think they're that bad, you know, eh? It's just a very simplistic design though. But, um, yeah, quite nice indeed though. It's not much I could say here, it's just that the pigeons are just pretty much way too similar to what I did in the past, I believe though. But, if you want to take a look at something really different, here is the product I've actually showed you earlier though, it is a Roasting Homing Pigeon Flock and Colour Breeding Variations 12 pack, £13.99 or £14, they come in three different colour variations, and there's 
four of them each, which is pretty much interesting, and they're named respectively. All of them are pretty much named respectively to their breed forms, which is pretty much the thing I was just saying. I don't know, I must have been having a lot of trouble though, just making open just with that for reviews. I just don't know what to say though. Sorry, I just can't do it at the moment though, because obviously I just don't know what to say though, because. Oh well. Anyways, I just have to go ahead and, and just unpack the blooming product though. And just, you know, I don't think my mouth is that ready though, just to make just that movie like this. And just as I unpack this product though, just look what we have. Here is a cluster flock of pigeons though. It looks like the pigeons are assembling their own tower. It looks like they just assembled their own structure or tower or something though. That's pretty interesting. But I'll just have a look at what we have. Ooh, you might think that this one is a pista, but look at this. Very, very different sort of wing colorization that you'd normally find on a pista. And the breed, as I might tell you here, is a. I uh, wonder what it's called. Blackish grey and white. Um, Eagle Saddle. Roasting Home Pigeon. So there's basically. Um, yeah, it looks not too bad, I have to say, eh? Hey, yes, it doesn't look too bad, I suppose. I love the, um, the way the pigeons have been detailed and stuff like that. And uh, it's quite good. And I might just be, I'd say if I look at the camera like that, okay? I'm just proving you guys I've actually got four of the three variations. Okay, so there's um, another one of these. Uh, but with like a darker shade of grey. Okay, so here's another one, like so. Very, very nice, okay. And um, this one here, uh, I don't know what this is. It's got like some sort of weird hoodlum sort of stripe sort of pattern going on there, but this breed is actually a pipe bold roasting homing pigeon. Uh, did I say the word homing wrong? <laughs> I don't know why, but this video is completely and utterly rough and ready, guys. I'm really sorry, but um, pretty much the way I've, I was just literally taking a break from my YouTube channel and stuff like that. But um, anyway, so I don't know if I'm just going to clap all of the birds, though, because of my rough talk, you know. And I don't often use profanity in my videos, though, but there are some puns like the cluster flock that I've just used, though. That's a great one, eh? I've been using. It's a very weird design there, it's pretty much like, uh, there must have been an error or something there that must have made this sort of pattern look more like that, rather than that. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty unusual there, and then you've also got this very weird colorization, which obviously has got traits, which look very similar to the blue bar pigeon, but this is a red bar pigeon, which looks pretty much better than the other Red pigeon product that I did in a previous video, which I will definitely say it was the dumbest pigeon product I've made, though. Because, um, yeah. It was supposed to be designed after, like, a, um, what's the other? I would say it's one of those tumbler pigeons that you can find. Hey, look, pretty nice. These pigeons, and what do you think? Pretty nice, though. Very, very nice indeed, eh? And then if I open the wings like so, eh? Whoa. I suppose that. Maybe by the end of this year, I think 2021 could have like the largest pigeon flock ever in a year there. Um, because I didn't start out with pigeons at, you know, at the beginning of the year there, but 2020 and 2019 I did. I only started with water birds, which is pretty strange now, because usually I'd, I would normally start a year with some pigeon themed products and the train has just collided with a luggage day. Oh. I've just. We go the train, I've just kept the train going. I just moved the layout just a bit there, just to make the train run a bit better there. Sorry about the rocket sounds for the trains there. I believe the, the train is pretty much the the thing that's doing a whole bunch of rockets there and it's making the whole video a bit difficult there. But I'd definitely say that is a nice flip up product there. And also these high bold racing equipment Neck pigeons pretty much have got like yellow eyes, whereas the rest of them have got like pinkish eyes, which is pretty much interesting though. But um, yeah, it looks 
not too bad. It doesn't look too bad. Also, the roasting homing pigeons, they're pretty much like one of the most ancient pigeon breeds ever, though. As I can basically describe, because obviously the roasting homing pigeon is one breed that is not just ancient, but it's also pretty much, I think, as we can all know about these types of pigeons, these breeds are pretty much well known for their homing, and I just say it, homing strain, this sort of trait, or this sort of origin, I believe they. And as we all know, domestic pigeons are pretty much the wild ancestors of our, I would just say, our coastal nesting rock doves. And they're also the sort of guys who often kind of navigate and they're pretty much intelligent birds as I can work out there because obviously whenever I think of pigeons they're actually really good at navigating back to where its owner is which is pretty much interesting as I can work out there so I have to say that the homing pigeon industry is I wouldn't say it's too cool but um, it's actually not too bad that's that product done Anyways, let me move on into something, well, a lot more common than, what a, you know, something a lot more common than something pigeon Let's go for something a little bit more gullible. <laughs> See what I did there with the pun, eh? Because we're going to be taking a look at some seagull products, so it is a third summer and third winter herring gull small flock 5 pack, £5.50. And there's the back of the packaging there. Now it's quite funny that different forms of herring gulls are now starting to become a lot more common um, than just normal forms. And also, strangely enough, herring gulls, as I can work out, they're actually starting to become a lot more common than lesser flatback gulls because not only for the fact that, you know, whenever I look at the maps of birds like, you know, lesser flatback gulls, they're pretty much common in you know, in Eastern Europe, but these guys, the herring gulls, they're pretty much more common in Western Europe than in the Eastern part of Europe. You know, Eastern Europe, as I would say, though, but, um, I'm, you know, just so glad to make these, because obviously, you know, whenever I think of herring gulls, they're like the more typical coastal British seaside seagull. And, uh, it's not too bad. Um, let me just go ahead and unpack this. Uh, another thing I also want to mention to you guys is that herring gulls have bigger wintering numbers than you would normally find on lists of blackback gulls. The numbers on them, they're sort of stable, but there's like a total of 130,000 of these guys wintering. But for herring gulls, there's like a total of 700,000 and I don't know what's the number, 740,000 individuals. That is a massive number, and what's quite funny is, is that with the herring gulls, uh, the nominate species tends to dominate even more than what we would normally find with herring gulls. You know, the British subspecies of herring gulls, Lowers argentagus, argentagus is the nominate subspecies, and um, what's the one that is like, you know, the subspecies that only breeds and winters in Western Europe at the same time? I would say it's Lowers argentagus. Argentetus. I believe it's the much more slimmer version of the herring gulls that you'd find in Scandinavia, but those ones there, I believe, they're pretty much the ones you would normally find in Western Europe. But, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, these um, herring gulls. I think the only tip to look out for is um, they do have this sort of brownish sort of thing, but it's not very really clear on the wing though. And uh, there's the um, dirty brown streaking on the head today. Pretty much the same aspect and also another thing is that they've got brown, well just say brown tail bands. Which is pretty much the thing I, I should have said a lot more quickly though, but such, such, um, great aesthetic, aesthetic, um, I would just say oddities I believe though. Aesthetic oddities, that's what I was trying to say here. And uh, let me just take a look at our next with that product here. Let's just take a look at some lesser black bat dolls. And it's a juvenile small flock of fledglings five pack. And it costs about eight pounds ninety nine or nine pounds. Very interesting. It's also the same price as those uh, pigeons, the five pack of rock doves. There's the back of the packaging there, which looks like that. 
And what's interesting of the black bat girl juveniles is, is that they're actually a lot more darker than the herring girls. Herring girls are pretty much lighter. You know, the juveniles, I'm pretty sure they look almost similar to the, you know, the lesser black bat girl juveniles, the herring girl juveniles, but a, a lot more lighter. Although I might be completely wrong. I always am, as I'm unpacking this. And funnily enough, uh, the wingtips and the tail bands, they're painted, actually they're not painted, but they've been done with, you know, look at the way they've been tilted. You know, with the black wing tips and also the tail band, they've been done with you know details like that. Okay, so that's m much much nicer than you would normally expect. And um, the wing the wing beats on those they're much smoother as well. Wow, I can't believe it. Even though they still retain the lazy greyish beak design though, and the cute aesthetic looking. Um, black eyes, which look pretty much almost chibi-like. You know, that's the main thing with those um, juvenile girls. And the strangest thing about this sort of detailing is, is that whenever you think of, you know, the girls, which were, uh, you know, they were, you know, the Seagull products that were released in early 2020, and the ones that were released in autumn of 2018, and you know, winter 2018, and I don't know. You know, in 2019, I used to remember products like, you know, a sort of like a Wingo-like appearance, though. A Wingo-like eye. But, um, they've changed, obviously, it's quite funny that the Seagulls have changed so, so dramatically. I bet from, like, the autumn of 2021, I bet they're going to be changing even further. That's the other thing I could also consider with. Anyways, here was a swimming flock fire pack. And, uh, it's, a, it's actually a small lock fire pack which is interesting and this is the fire pack version of the trial pack that I did eight pounds no five more hair and girls once again there there's the back of the packaging which looks like that I don't know what I'm about to say but once again they are still retaining the wing girl like design with those different eyes once again it's very interesting though it's like they've matched up the two together though anyways I'm just gonna unpack this and um, let's see what we have Yep, just the same dumb old design that we've got there. Maybe I should have never unpacked this at the same time. And do they have names? Yes, they do. They all say the word Herring Girl. Just the same blooming names like that. There. It's just the bloody same, the bloody same design and the bloody same name and also the bloody same design. But nevertheless, they look quite cool and cute at the same time. But what's quite funny is, is that instead of five we've actually got six how strange is that in fact we might have to destroy one of these because obviously well uh, you know it's not the right number well I don't know about you but you just heard these ripping sounds that's the sound of death whenever you hear those ripping sounds that's not a good sign but I have to do it because well that's not the right amount one um, I'm just checking one two three four Five. Hopefully, I've got five. Yep, yep. There's five inside here. In fact, I could try and make a product with six, but in a much more correct way. And uh, at least a product I uh, can show you there. Just, just cover this for quite a short time, eh? Alright, moving right along. It's the Alpha Herring Girl versus the Second Winter Herring Girl. Uh, feeding flock top pack. Thirteen pounds ninety five. Five pence away from that. There's the back of the packaging there. Ooh, something pretty gory here, as I'm thinking I might be pretty uh, lucky to go ahead and cover this product here, because what it looks like to be there's, there's some sort of weird alpha male herring girl. Feeling angry for the fact he wants to dominate his meal, he wants to be the most dominant seagull ever to eat this one here. This, what's that? Is that a salmon head? I believe he's the, the one that he is about to finish off this piece of salmon, decapitated salmon head. Easily though, without these um, juveniles just pestermizing him or taking over his meal. Uh, anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this. You know, seagulls, as I can describe, they're basically the wolf of all birds though, because they pretty much fly in flocks. They are two scavengers, just like vultures do. 
And um, also another thing which was very similar to the fact that there's also another trait that seagulls tend to have the same thing with vultures though. Not just scavengers, but they would also poke on things into burrows, like they would literally find a rabbit inside a burrow though. Even when they're dead or not though. But anyways, um, there's the fish here. Also, likes vultures, seagulls have hook beaks. And I bet it's a... I think it would have. It's quite funny, we're getting products there, mashing up together though, it feels like we're getting herring gulf products, but, oh my god, are they mashing up with mackerels? I bet these are mackerels. The packaging told me at the back that the, you know, the, the flipping fish are mackerels. Oh my god, eh? It's just the same design, same, same, same. Obviously the same type of fish. Now that's a bit selfish. <laughs> Get the pun, eh? It's very, very weird. And then you've also got this decapitated Atlantic salmon head. That's so weird, eh? Personally, I would have Icelandic cod or fish and chips. That's delicious, eh? Very interesting, eh? Maybe smoked salmon would be much more better, eh? Uh, anyways, let me just take a look at the herring guys next. And, um, ooh, this is very special though. This is something we don't often get. A much more pretty angry looking herring girl. He's like, you need to keep your distance! <laughs> That's what he's trying to tell me, eh? That's a very, 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 very livid looking herring girl, as you can tell. And, um, there you go. There's the name, herring girl. The archetypal seagull of all of our favourite seaside towns, like you know, Brighton and Eastbourne and Western Supermare, Wallace, Swansea, what do you want more? Sorry, Tank, I fault. And yes, we've got the angry eyes. That's something we'd not normally find on a herring girl product, uh, but it looks really nice, eh? Really, I would just say, emotional and expressional. Uh, very, very nice. And let me show you the juveniles, which look like that. And as I said earlier, they've got lighter details like that, though. But what's even more specific about these guys is that they are also second winter birds, because as you can see, it's not only just that, but they've also got detailings like that, which are both not just brown, but also grey on the top section of the bird, there, including the hump, or I don't know what it's called, though. And you've got the wings as well, though. We do also have a combination of black, brown, and grey. So that's a very nice, dullish sort of colour combination. And there you go, there's the name, Second Winter Herring Girl. Pretty interesting, I would say, eh? But uh, what's quite funny with Second Winter Herring Girls is that they are normally, I would just say, whiter and a lot more paler than juvenile girls, although I might say otherwise. Um, I'd probably say that this setting takes place on, like, February. Okay, so it's not too bad, and um, just flapping these birds pretty much incessantly because maybe you guys just want to see me flap every single bird as I do. Much better like that. Obviously, it's my hand that's covering the way that it's taking over some of the water, which is okay, which is not very really nice. And that train is taking over. Come on, please. Come on. Thank you. There you go. And. Looks pretty much the same, eh? That's that product done. I mean, what's all of these products just relating to bloody seagulls? And, you know, even with the herring girls, it's just too, too much. That's a lot of it, eh? Too much herring girl thing products. Very interesting, eh? Let's take a look at it, eh? Uh, I don't know how many we've got here, eh? Oh my god, we're getting... Not again, really? Herring Girl Frog vs. Mackerel Shell 12 pack? 15 pounds? That is ridiculous. Another Fifth Lab Oli Gummy Clapping Birds British Wildlife Collection Seagull product? That is so absurd, man. But, anyways, here's the back of the packaging there. Once again, we've got a very cool looking picture of a Herring Girl ready to bite on one of the mackerels there, which is next to him. That's very interesting, isn't it, eh? Mmm. And we've also got a Herring Girl left in there. Looks like he's relaxed. Which is pretty interesting. And I don't know about you, but it uh, almost looks like the same artwork as one of those swimming hand guards. But um, yeah, it looks 
pretty nice though, that product there, hey? Let me just unpack this and see what we've got. And interestingly, the macro and the artwork of the packaging though is pretty much similar to, well, what I did it recently though. There you go, the macro is just look pretty much the, the same, same fish in the gloomy way. It's just the same, oh my god, I can see one of those beady eyes, not seedy eyes. Wow, that is very clear. I can't believe it. This is so vibrant and crisp the way the camera is actually playing with me. And I'm also sounding a bit more confident now, which is very, very nice to hear. Um, no, it doesn't do that for me though. Let me show you this one here. And I don't know about you, but um, another problem with the way the fishes have been designed is sometimes that the amount of PDA glue that is added to the model of the fish show is pretty much the other concern there because if there's not enough, well, the model just looks like it's been split, which is not really that nice to hear though, but that's one of the main faults with these products though, which contain water themed products with fish. Anyways, here is the, yep, just the same blooming herring girl, okay, just the same, same, same herring girl. Why are there so many of them? Oh my god. There's like so many of them, it's all down to the fact that I just hear so many of those long calling seagulls. Wow, oh my goodness me. Pigeons on steroids, pigeons on steroids. My goodness me, it's quite funny, we're getting a lot more seagull products than pigeons, which is very, very strange indeed. Although by saying that, there's actually millions of pigeons compared to herring and lesser blackback gulls. You know, everywhere. It's Oh my goodness me. And obviously with pigeons, crows and seagulls, even starlings and sparrows and all of your favourite birds that gang together in flocks, minor birds, uh, parrots I believe they. I know I wouldn't include parrots though, but they do join together in flocks. What's very interesting with sparrows, starlings, seagulls, uh, pigeons and crows is that they've adapted well into urban life and what's very nice about these guys is that they flock together and they're also considered to be birds that are well let's just say pretty much a bird that can do almost anything uh, I'll literally describe them as basically a jacker but I don't know what it's called I, I, I actually have heard about this sort of term it's called jack of the trades and this sort of term also refers to species which are pretty much generalists. They could literally almost eat anything, they can live anywhere, you know, everywhere. Not including its own original habitat, but everywhere. Very cool indeed. Okay, next product is going to be something which is not related to birds at all, but this one here. Flip Lava Origami Buddhist Wildlife Collection, Smooth Hammerhead, Shark Attack, at Fishing Trawler Boat. Oh, it's a five pack. I forgot to put the number there, but it says the word pack. But there's no number. Nine pounds, once again. Very weird trend with having products have having eight pounds, no, 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 nine pounds. Oh my goodness, that is a very vicious and fearsome looking um, shark. It looks like a hammerhead to me, though. That's also a type of shark. Obviously, going by the head there. It looks like the. Yes, it is a hammerhead shark, what it looks like, though. And this, once again. Yes, I almost think this fish here looks like a mackerel, but it's actually a piece of tuna. And it looks very, very nice. And also the boat itself. Um, yeah, it looks pretty nice as well. Let me just show you. Which looks okay. So, you get like two boxes. And, um, oh, where's the fish? Yeah, okay, there's the fish here. It sort of looks like that. Looks like a mackerel. It's funny we're getting fishies with blue tops and white bottoms though, which is very, very weird. Grey fins and grey flippers and blooming yellow beady eyes. Anyways, I'm just going to show you what this cutter actually looks like. Uh, this cutter here almost looks like a tugboat. This sort of model here. Might be that cartoon show. What's that called? Theodore Tugboat and uh, what's the other? TV show that is related to Thompson Friends, Tugs. Oh my god, that's gonna make the world friends uh, sort of scream, eh? Um, it's got a very weird number that I'm actually not gonna say because the video will take too long if I just keep on saying the numbers here. 
But anyways, lovely red stripes go, pinkish red stripes. And this, I would say, is the back of, I would say it's the cab, or if you want to call something like that in a very nautical way, I think it's called a bridge. I might be totally wrong. And, um, you can actually attach to that boat there. Okay, so you can fit into that section there. Like, if someone is driving the boat there, or operating this boat. I assume it's a trawler. Okay, going by the sort of design, I believe, there. Eh? And I'm actually having trouble there fitting it. Because it looks like that this boat must have been like that in its flipping package. Oh my god, it does look a bit cruddy though, but um, see how it goes. Yay! Nicely fitted in! And there's a very nice sort of um, ID tunneling here. It looks like something out of the Pixar's Cars franchise or whatever. And strangely enough, he's got one, oh my goodness me, the whole of the ship, that's got a very weird mouth. Looks like it's in a very, sort of a petrified looking place, eh? Yeah, from that um, sort of boat, which looks like that. Okay, so that is a very strange looking boat design, eh? But anyways, here is a nice looking um, box here that would normally be useful to you carry the tuna. And there is a hammerhead shark. Actually, I'm not going to go in there because that is not what the shark jaws is based on. The flipping smooth hammerhead. And what's very strange about these sharks is, is that although they're hammerhead sharks, they've also been well known to inhabit areas which are temperate sort of oceans, I believe, though. And it's got those strange, funny looking eyes there. And um, it's not really, it doesn't look like a shark to me, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like a very weird top view of a shark, but it's so strange. I don't know, it looks like some sort of weird rover with aquatic plates or something, eh? It's like a very weird abomination or something, I don't know. And there's the, well, I don't know what it is, it's got a mouth like that, just very similar to that boat that I did. That's the underside of the shark, which looks like that, and there's the top view of it. And those cuckoo looking eyes as well, very, very weird, goofy looking eyes. Not googly, but the eyes just look very funny indeed though. Also that very, very interesting sort of archetypal hammer-like head. And that's why hammerhead sharks get their name. Anyways, I think that's that product done. Pretty fun for the kids. Well, if they are interested in the song, don't get me started. Don't get me started on that song, please. It gets my head and my brain frazzled up, though. Frazzled, that's the other word I could also say, though. But anyways, last but not least, here's our last flip that product I might show you here. Boom! This one here, if you don't actually realise this, this is what looks like to be a headband. And it's all red, and obviously it's something that is perfect for cosplaying, maybe for Red Nose Day or Comet Relief or something like that though. Hopefully it's not the coronavirus, but I believe there's seven of these strip pieces of paper though, I just don't know. Oh, looks like it's coming off there, sorry. My bad, I didn't mean to pull that one real hard though, but um, well, a little bit too hard, but I believe, I think it's based on a very weird piece of Afro-Caribbean sort of hairstyle called Dreadlocks. There's like, these strip pieces of paper are meant to be the dreadlocks that you'd normally find in Afro-Caribbean people's hair, I believe. Though. It's like a cosplay thing. And uh, I must have done a video of these on TikTok, which you might probably hear some very familiar on VR chat. Even that quote, that's pretty much um, ringing my bell, saying, D do you know the way? Anyways... Here is, of course, the licensing info. And if I go a bit closer here, the licensing info is... I'm not sure if I can show it to you properly there, but it's right over there. And, I mean, that's really nice with the way these headbands have been added. I mean, what's up with flip flap products these days? Just not getting licensing info like that. You know, the horse is bolted, I'm sorry to say. But anyways, um, yeah. It's the best with that product that I've ever made so far though. I'm actually not going to be wearing it at the moment though, because I've already worn it before and it looks super cool. 
So there you go. That's pretty much about it. Nine put up products in... Well, obviously, at the 28th of February, and I feel like I need to take a dump at the toilet though, because I just feel like something brown and ugly is something that you don't want to mention here. So anyways, if you have really enjoyed this video here, please go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and sorry for taking so long, but mind you, it has been completely and utterly awesome to go back and do some more toilet reviews on my YouTube channel. Hopefully I'll try and make some more until like the 8th of March or the 5th of March. So, I think that's about it. Nothing much to say here, so thanks for watching and goodbye for now as this train helps along the way. Pulling along or up right. Not as long as before, but long as it is. Bye!